Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here, and I want to talk about what has happened and what will happen to GameStop stop <laughs> and related stocks. Let's take a look. So first of all, and what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the insanity of the market right now. I'm going to talk about how did we get to this situation, and I'm going to talk about what's going to happen. So you're going to want to stay for that. All right. So I've been through lots of manias in my life. Um, I've been through the great grain markets of the 1973 bull market. I've been through the silver and gold amazing bull markets in the late 1970s and 1980. Uh, I've been through, you know, dot-com mania. I mean, all kinds of huge booms. The marijuana that we just went through a couple years ago. So we've got something similar, and, and, and there's a pattern that always develops in all of these situations. So what's going to happen will not be a surprise. What's different this time is how we got there. So first of all, here's a chart of GameStop over the last, uh, well, it goes back, uh, it goes back till, till last summer. And you can see that the, the stock price was around 20 bucks two weeks ago, and we got to above actually $500. So we went from 20 to $500 in two weeks. Now, GameStop is shutting down stores, <laughs> okay? It's not a growing company. It has terrible fundamentals. So how in the world do we go from $20 to $500? Okay, so how did we get here? I need to go back a little bit, and let me talk about the big whale move. You see, what I think happened was uh, last year we had a huge run-up in the NASDAQ, and it turns out that it was SoftBank, the big hedge fund run by Masayoshi Son, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, and what he was doing was he was buying massive amounts of call options on big tech names like Apple, Facebook, Google, Amazon. So huge quantities, a billion, two billion dollars. And remember, each option is for a hundred shares. So he's buying each one of these for two, three, four, five hundred dollars. And of course, he's getting the impact as if he was putting in ten or twenty billion dollars. So he really moved the market in those big tech names, and we saw a monster bull market. Now, those are big, big, big cap stocks that are very large uh, capitalization. And then what happened was eventually he stopped buying them, and that was the end of the big bull market. Literally, he, he was bulling those stocks higher. Nobody else was, okay? So I think what happened, and let me go to my next bullet point. I need to explain what short selling is. What short selling is, is where you sell a stock that you don't own and you try to buy it back later at a cheaper price. So you sell first and buy later. Normally, we buy first and sell later. Okay, so that's short selling. In the United States, in order to short sell, you have to borrow somebody else's shares. So if I want to short sell GameStop, I have to go and find another 100 shares borrow it, sell it, and eventually I have to pay it back to the person I borrowed it from. Now, there's a whole industry around this, okay? And when you go to your broker and you, and you just put it in order to sell, they go find it for you. So you don't actually have to do anything at all, okay? Sometimes stocks get to a point where they're not allowed to be short sold because the float or the amount of shares that are outstanding that are not tied up for some reason, the float is what we trade. But their stock, say, hold by the owner of the company, that doesn't get traded, so the float is what we trade. Sometimes if the float gets very small, uh, brokerage houses will say, we can't borrow the stock. We, we don't know where to get it from. It doesn't happen that often, but it does happen sometimes, okay? So it's not shortable. So now you understand. So what was happening was that a lot of hedge funds, and in particular, there was one hedge fund called Melvin, which, uh, but there's others, who were short selling stocks like <clears throat> GameStop, American Airlines, and some other ones. And so, and I'm going to show you how to get this information in a minute. 
So what happens then is that they short the stock. So they borrow it from somebody. Well, then if somebody comes along and buys a lot of it, so if Sun from SoftBank were to come in and buy a lot of GameStop, then the short sellers, they start to lose money. The price goes up. They start to lose money. They lose money. They lose money. And then finally, at some point, they say, I got to get out of here. I can't stand the pain anymore. And so they go out and they buy their shares back in a panic and the stock skyrockets. Does that look familiar to you? Okay. So then we saw a lot of shorts looking at a lot of companies that, sh that have a really good chance of going bankrupt, like GameStop, like American Airlines, because COVID has created a lot of potential bankruptcies out there and it has created bankruptcies as well. So then a group started on Reddit and um, uh, reddit.com. And what they were doing is that they were ganging up and buying the stock of stocks that had a heavy short interest. In other words, there was a lot of short selling in those stocks. Once again, so they, instead of, Sun at SoftBank doing the buying, it was a big group of retail investors and they were going in and buying and then the shorts were getting squeezed and had to panic buy, causing GameStop to you know go up 150% in one day, okay? So that Reddit group is now actually closed. Now the interesting thing to me is that might be illegal because they're acting in concert. They're getting together and they are colluding to manipulate a stock, which is illegal. Now, I don't know if the SEC is going to pay attention to it because it's a bunch of little investors. They'll go after a bunch of big investors if they do that, but they don't usually go after a guy buying 100 shares or buying, um, actually what the people in Reddit did is buy call options. So let me explain that. So they're retail investors. So they go out and they buy a call option for 200 bucks on GME. Now, the market maker for the option then has to go out and buy shares of GME. So if, if the Reddit people buy a at-the-money call that has a delta of 50, which means that it's the, it has the price action of 50 shares, so what will happen is the market maker will sell the option, the call option, to the Reddit investor, but they hedge. They don't want to be short GME. So they go buy 50 shares of stock to hedge the option they just sold to the Reddit people. So that's how the option purchase translates into the actual stock itself. So the market maker then goes and buys and buys and buys the stock. The Reddit people didn't. They bought the option. That forced the market maker to buy the stock, which then caused the squeeze. I think I said that clearly. If not, rewind and watch. So that's what's happened. So buy options, the market makers buy stock to hedge. Now, this is a chart from finviz.com. And what I did is use their screener function. And if you'll notice about two thirds away across the top, uh, across the page, you'll see a column of red lines called float short. So as I say, the company may have a million shares, but only 100,000 in the float. 900,000 might be in the treasury, so they're not tradable. GME, 121% of the shares were short. Now, what does that tell me? It tells me that somebody's doing something illegal. You see, remember, if I want to short GME, I have to go borrow the shares from someone. Okay, then I short sell them. But how do I get 122% of the shares? You can't borrow over 100%. So something weird is going on. Now, one of the things that can happen, though, is that what I just described, which is where you go borrow the shares, that's, all, that's in the United States. That's not in Canada. That's not in Bermuda. In, in many countries around the world, you don't have to borrow the shares before you sell them. You have to go, you can just sell them. You don't have to borrow them. You just sell them. You don't have to have anything. You just sell them. That's called a naked short sell because you didn't borrow the shares. So it's quite possible that people in Canada or Americans going through a Canadian brokerage house, which is technically, you're not allowed to do that, but there's ways of doing it. 
set up a Canadian company and then have the Canadian company own, uh, open the brokerage house, or you can go to Bermuda, or wh there's places to do it, and short sell the stock. And that might be what, what happened here in GME, is that there was some naked short selling going on, which then makes the squeeze even tighter. Now, these are the top companies where the percentage of the flow, look at that, ATUS, I don't even know what company that is, but look at that, there's Bed Bath & Beyond down there at number six, there's Ligon Pharmaceuticals, which just completely took off, there's S Power down there, I think that's Sun Power, down there at number nine, I'm looking at ones that I know, there's Tilray at 14, uh, you, you get the point, right? There's your hit list for the Reddit options buyers, okay? Now, some of these might have good fundamentals, so you probably don't want to do it, but most of them don't have good fundamentals, which is why their float is so high. That number there, the float short, is so high. Usually those companies, they're not very good companies at all to own, all right? All right, everybody, uh, I thought you'd enjoy this, so what's going to happen? All right. Number one, the options options expire this Friday on GameStop. Of course, people may have options that expire in February, but a lot will expire this Friday, okay? Because you could pick them up for a dime, 20 cents, 30 cents, 50 cents. So they're like a lotto ticket. So I could go buy a $20 lotto ticket or I could buy an option on GameStop. Well, you know, I got a shot to make money on GameStop. I don't know, I only have a 50% chance of making money on uh, lotto tickets. So keep this in mind. Friday is going to be a big day for GME. Option holders. Now, if I'm an option holder, I have three choices. Number one, I could roll the options from on Friday from this expiration to, let's say, third week in February. A lot of them are going to do that. The ones that are still bullish on GME are going to do that. They're going to take delivery. Well, if I take delivery because they're now deep in the money, I'm going to have to come up with $500 times 100 shares. I'm going to have to come up with, what is that, $50,000? Not going to happen. So very few of them will take delivery. If they do take delivery, they'll sell the shares on Monday. So that'll actually, well, we'll talk about that in a second. The third thing they can do is just simply get out of the option on Friday and walk away from GME and don't do anything. So those are the only three things that they can do. So what will happen then is if they take delivery, they'll sell the stock. So that'll hammer the stock price. If they take their profits and liquidate their long calls, then the market makers will sell their hedges, which will hammer the price. The only thing that can keep the price up is if they roll the options, because then the market maker will just roll their hedge forward into the next delivery month. So you're going to see a lot of selling pressure on Friday. Friday and Monday. The question is, is that what percentage of these people are going to roll their options into the next expiration and how many are either going to take delivery or more likely take their profits? Still, look for pressure on Friday and Monday. Now, the reason I went through this explanation is because I want you to bookmark this video because every time you see a big spike up like this, I want you to go back and I explain what's happening and what will happen. So what should you do if you don't own GameStop? Nothing. It's it's skyrocketing. The shorts are being squeezed. It could go to $1,000, okay? Too risky to short it. Should you buy it? No, because it's probably going to be down on, on Friday and or Monday. And you know what? The company's a piece of garbage. There's no fundamental reason why it should be $500. You always have to go to value first. If the stock was worth $1,000 a share, then of course you should buy it. You should buy options on it. But it's not. It's worth $0.50, cents, not $500. So basically, if you look at the list that I just showed you, the short float, and you think that the Reddit mob or these types of people or there's other people who do short squeezes, professional investors, I wouldn't know any of those, but who will do a short squeeze or participate in a short squeeze. You've got to get in early. You can't get in now when it's $500. So what's going to happen is in this whole GME thing or AAL or any of these stocks is most people are going to lose all their money. 
huge profits for the people that got in before. But because of all the publicity, you're going to see a lot of people go out and buy options today. They're going to lose all their money. They're going to lose all their money. I've seen this happen a million times. A million. Count them. Maybe a billion. So I just stay away from these plays. When I first started out in the early 70s, I used to play these all the time, trying to figure out which stocks were about to be manipulated so that they would move higher. And I developed a system for doing that. But with the advent of the option market, it makes it a little bit harder to use the system that I originally did because I was looking at the relationship of volume to price. Um, and that now, with there may be very little volume here because people are using options. The system still works, but I don't really do it because it's a very risky strategy. You can make a lot of money, obviously. If you were long, you can make a lot of money. It's a lot of work, so I just happily make my 50 or 100 percent doing other things but anyway watch this video again every time this happens to remind you of what's happening and what will happen all right everybody we'll talk to you later thanks very much